Hi, everybody. So how do we make sense of what we've heard this morning and what we're planning to do for the next day and a half? Um, first of all, it's delightful that we're all together. And thank you to North Carolina New Schools and to Robin and her staff um, for enabling all of us to be able to think together and come together, plan together. But the big thing that we're tr we've been challenged to do over this day and a half is to design together. This morning you heard from Chick that curiosity and collaboration is everything because that's how we make life better for all of us, for ourselves in every single way, in every kind of imaginative way. And he offered that to us. We also heard Sam Houston from North Carolina. Sam talked about being creative, innovative, and has offered us a trademark for that, strategies that engage minds. That's STEM 2.0. But isn't it what it should have always been anyway? But throughout, the throughout what we're going to experience, after lunch, a little bit before lunch, but certainly as in the sessions coming, everything is labeled design. Why, is it, why did we think that design was so important? Embedded in everything that we've been talking about in STEM in North Carolina and around our country, around the world, is our strive to make things better, life better, education better, and to, to be able to live a kind of life and offer a future to our children in ways that we can't even imagine. This comes from planning. It's coming from understanding issues and understanding what problems those issues spawn and the really fabulous challenge of figuring out those pathways. When you were in sessions with kids today, just right before lunch, what you heard is their pathways. They were striving to, to, to point to those solutions, point to those problems, know that those, what they were working on were issues, and have you come with them on a pathway to trying to solve that. That's what this conference is all about. We're talking about designing STEM schools, designing STEM teaching and learning, designing learning with current and emerging technologies and career pathways and workforce, designing STEM networks, strategic STEM partnerships, sustainability, all about what are the issues that we're thinking about that plague us and problems that we absolutely have to solve. What I'd like you to do is to take a moment and, and turn to your right and talk with the person next to you a, a, for a couple of minutes to focus on, hey, we're designing. You have to hear the message. What I want you to do is to focus on why, what are the design challenges that you came to learn about and to be able to address? What are your issues and problems that you're hoping to get some, key, to have that conversation and to ask good questions about? Turn to the person at the right and let's, let's see what we get to. You've had a moment to think about Folks, I'm a former principal. <laughs> I can get my principal's voice on. You've taken the reason to actually verbalize why you're here is so that you don't miss those moments, so that you do stop and ask those questions, those whys, that you know why you're here, what you're here to learn, and why the process of design is so key. In our nation, we have taken this as a challenge, and we've said we are up to the design challenge for to create a kind of STEM vision that offers those opportunities for our youngsters, the, the youngsters that we have with us, the ones that are in our schools, in our homes, and in our communities. Probably one of our greatest nation's designers, however, is a designer that comes out of the world of co the corporate world. Margaret Ashita is here with us today. She is, she is a, a former IBMer. As a former IBMer, you look and, at the world through that lens of design. What are those issues? What are those problems? She, ha she has spent the last few years working with the M in the state of New York, creating the Empire 
STEM learning, statewide STEM learning network. Margaret has done what no governor in the state of New York has been able to do. She has been able to design for the state and with the state of New York so that downstate, upstate, and New York act as one STEM network. She is now head of Just Taking the Reins of STEMX, which is our nation's multi-state STEM network. States like North Carolina, the network led by Sam Houston, many, many states across this country have developed those networks. Now Margaret's job is to move from the state of New York and to help all the states, to help all of us, to do the kind of designing around a STEM education that serves our kids. STEMX talks about educate, engage, and exchange. And I'm going to ask Margaret to talk a little bit with us about what that design, designing means to actually addressing issues that are, encompass a whole nation. Thank you, Jen. Hey, is the bus leaving? We should give a hand to all of these students who are at the center of our design. You guys are spectacular. And it probably won't shock you to know, Jen got to eight folds and was getting to nine. <laughs> I only got to five, so that's why she's sitting there and I'm sitting here. So thank you for that, that great introduction. Um, you know, uh, moving into this new role at, at STEMX, I am now an employee of Battelle, which is the largest independent research and development organization in the world that has a commitment, a strong commitment to education and to STEM education particularly. And you know, thinking about it, it was so new. When I registered for the conference, I was still the sort of found, now I call myself the founding director of the Empire State STEM Learning Network, and we have several people here. But you know, my badge said the old title. So while Chick was talking this morning, I took on the design challenge, and I ripped apart little pieces of paper to engineer my STEM X Patel badge. So I'm current now. Um, you thinking about these design challenges, as you asked you know, people in the audience, I was sitting here thinking about what are the design questions I came to this convening with? Because I will say, as you know, Sam mentioned STEMX this morning, and thank you, Sam, for being part of the leadership team for this organization. We have people here from at least, at least, eight different states that are involved in STEMX now. And what they are are statewide organizations that are committed to advancing STEM teaching and learning who agree to work together to help us go faster, yet slow down to speed up, learn from one another, help us avoid you know, redundant investments and so forth. So we've got people here from California, Arizona, Idaho, New York, North Carolina, of course. Um, I, I said Idaho, did I? Mm -hmm. uh, Ohio, Tennessee, Texas, and I probably missed a few, so I'm North sorry Dakota. if I missed you. North Dakota. North Dakota is here <laughs> in the room as well. So, but they have this kind of common cause. And so, you know, even coming to this convening as some of us are presenting, but all of us, all of us are here to learn and engage. And so that tagline about educate, um, engage, and exchange is really what networking is all about. So I just want to say thank you to New Schools, NC New Schools. It's great to be back in North Carolina. And congratulations on pulling together such a powerful opportunity to us and to NC STEM and the, and the team for your part in this. And while in Jan for ties, Jan didn't mention, but she helped us get the Empire State STEM Learning Network designed up and running. And by the way, that design continues. So it's not done yet. I'm not sure it will ever be done. So here are some design questions. Getting back to the original question. Sorry, I had to wander around there a little bit. When I thought about you know, coming to this convening, yes, we're doing a workshop tomorrow on STEM design. But we're also thinking about, you know, as we're starting up either a statewide or a regional or a local or what you're doing when you set about um, taking your school from point A to point B. Maybe you're already a STEM school, but you want to become a more fully integrated STEM school. Or maybe you're a STEM school that you want to help other schools in your region or in your state to get involved and so forth. There are some fundamental design questions that we continue to come back to, no matter what your perspective. If you're a national, state, regional, or where all the real action happens, in the classroom, and in, by the way, the classrooms that are outside the traditional school setting with after school and informal science education. One is, well, what is my dream? What's my vision? In, in the corporate world, that's the vision thing. And some of us, I know there are a couple of them that are sort of ex-IBMers or IBMers in the room out there. When Lou Gerstner came in to turn the company around, he said, I don't need no vision thing. But he did after a little while. But what's my dream? And that's always, that's sometimes a hard question to answer. But that is a design question. Another design question is, well, where am I now? 
you know, what, what is my current state of being? Now, in the business world, we would call that situation analysis. You go through and kind of understand, where am I right now? Then the next question that can lead to is, who's already working on something, either with me now or somewhere nearby that I could tap into? Because we have a common dream. We have a common interest. And maybe, if we work together, we might be able to go further, faster, cheaper. And again, in the corporate world and in the educational transformation world, you call that asset mapping, right? What is asset mapping? What do we got? What do we have that we can tap into? And that then can lead to the design question, what do we do? So now how do we go about doing this? And that is getting to a blueprint, designing what your blueprint is going to be for action. And so each of those things, you know, I guess they're, they're very simple. They sound very simple, but boy, they can be really hard to do. But it's in so important to think about that sort of design process. What's my dream? Where do I want to be? Uh, where am I right now? Do I know my data? And don't get stuck on knowing your data, by the way. Knowing data is a good thing, but you don't want to get stuck in paralysis, analysis paralysis, right? Then going to, what's already going on? We found in New York, and other states around the country are finding, as, you, as you're demonstrating by being here in North Carolina and looking at this incredible, this incredible agenda you put together, you have a tremendous amount that's already going on in your state no matter where you are. Do you know it? Do you know the people? Have you talked with one another? Can you, by connecting the dots with one another, get to some even greater impact, not only for you, your school, but more broadly across the state? We know the answer is yes, because we're seeing shining examples of it here in North Carolina and other states across the country. And then getting to that blueprint, which needs to be, you know, you need to be flexible and willing to, you know, adapt it as you go. So when we talk about design, you know, maybe those are some thoughts about breaking it down. And then, you know, all the way back to, for me as the new leader of STEMX, you know, we have states that have come together because of a common interest and passion. You really have to have the passion for this, as you all do, right, for kind of solving world hunger, education style, is to use STEM as a Trojan horse to get after, you know, education reform. And so having even those common interests, I, as the new leader of this organization, need to, you know, figure out what is, we have a vision statement, but how does that vision statement really translate, you know, into, you know, what the design questions are and how you engage people from very different states, each of which have 10 to 20 very distinct regions within those states, so that we can help one another, learn from one another. Every state, large and small, has something to contribute, but do it in a deliberate way so we can measure and gauge our progress from year to year. So... So Margaret, you can tell I talk in paragraphs. So. No, that's great. And I, I think, help everybody to understand Chick's comment this morning. He said that he was very, it was very important to him to understand the constraints. And that in fact, um, in doing that, it, it, there was freedom in understanding that. So what, is, what are the constraints that you see that, that folks here will actually have to face sure. or are facing? Sure. Well, you know your constraints better than anyone, I guess, but if you don't mind if I tell a story, okay, it's a northerner story, so forgive me this, but, <laughs> you know, from New York, which happens to be my home now, I kind of grew up in the Midwest, but now I live in New York and I work on things around the country. You know, thinking about um, the design challenges of getting a STEM network up and running, Jan, uh, you set the expectations low, please, in the future. Is when I started the work in New York, um, that was three governors ago, that was uh, three state commissioners of education ago. That was two chancellors of major systems ago, new chancellor of the city of New York's Department of Education, new chancellor of the State University of New York system, um, and a few other changes that have gone on. So, you know, just in a couple of, you know, fairly short years in the lifetime of, you know, of education, a lot of change. And so as we started the work of how do we figure out, do we have the will, do we have the capacity in New York to get after STEM together? Um, we went around and had conversations, but informing those conversations around the state with business, with education, with community organizations, with government in all 10 economic regions of the state. What we did was to sit down with our colleagues from the Ohio STEM Learning Network and, and Jan and Ties helped facilitate this, and with what was the roots, the, the startup of NC STEM. Because the three of us happened to have a very common cause at that point, which was to come at this, as Sam said this morning from the economic you know, development, not crisis, I want to call it opportunity, and connecting from economic prosperity back through to how education through talent fuels your ability to innovate and grow the economy and make your communities as prosperous as they can possibly be. So when we started there, one of the first questions we asked one another, we used design questions for everything. 
I try to be disciplined. I don't have a meeting unless there's a design question. I may not confess what the question is if you come into the meeting, but what is the question you're trying to answer? We said, what are the barriers? And we even pose that you know, to the people in the conversations. So important, and it made such a difference. It made such a difference in terms of, you know, here were some of the barriers. One barrier was people said, you know, innovation in our state would be if we actually did what we recommended the last three times there was a conversation about education. Has anybody ever been in that situation? <laughs> so that was one dimension of it. Another dimension was, well, what about policy? Policy, you know, seat time, in our case, regents exams, all these kinds of things um, tended to be very large barriers to innovation, and some of them still are. Yet, thinking back, this was just before Race to the Top was announced, and Race to the Top has some very great elements, and it has some elements that have been a little bit challenging for us. We happen to be one of the Race to the Top states, as is North Carolina. But, you know, being able to speak openly about the barriers that people faced in the classroom or that a superintendent faced in terms of working with their board in terms of you know, dealing with the requirements coming out of state education right and left, um, in terms of how do you engage with business, and even design challenges from our business partners, desperately wanting to get involved and to help to advance you know, STEM teaching and learning, yet you know, we have language differences, right? There's a different language that you use in a large company from a small company. Good heavens, in the company I work for, there was a different language on the third floor of corporate headquarters than the first <laughs> floor of corporate headquarters, right? But even the terminology, when we work together, you know, makes such a difference. So, so please, you know, so I'm just, I'm very excited by all of you being here and by the agenda here because you have so many opportunities. I'm seeing it in the hallways too, you know, to ask one another and, and put your questions out on the table, even if you're not sure if it's a question. There is no stupid question. There is no dumb question. They're all good questions, and that helps you to get to, you know, achieving whatever your dream might be. Thank you. So that is a real challenge for us all. Um, what we heard this morning is that why is one of the most powerful things of questions that can, you can ask. So if, if we think about this, in the next day and a half, let's put a challenge to us. We're going to meet together again at lunch tomorrow and have a similar conversation, but this time instead of us speaking, we want you to speak. What we'd like you to do is to think about those design questions and those design challenges as you go through sessions. What are those constraints? What are the barriers? Positive constraints also. Things that are in the system that you know you can make work, not just always the negative. What are those to those questions that you spoke about to your partner to the right when we got started? And so when we get back to tomorrow, let's try and pull this together and see what learnings happen together, what you communicated, and what you still need so that we as a group can actually help you to, to end the conference at the end of tomorrow having made great strides to, um, per the reason why you're here. So Margaret, thanks so much. Thank you. We'll, uh, we're around and all, of, all the folks around here are, um, are here to help each other. Nobody has a single expertise. Everybody here has multiple and um, good conversations are important. And remember that four-year-old in all of us, that why is most, is, needs to be in the forefront of the next day and a half. So thanks all, Mark, Robin. This is a design Thank you, Jan and Margaret. And hopefully what they started to plant the seeds for is really this idea that this conference is not just about coming together and seeing people that maybe you haven't seen since this time last year and saying, wow, isn't that really cool, but really getting serious about, okay, what can we take back to our own school communities and how can we make this real for our own students? See, come on.